praise God. Amen. I wish you just continued preaching that. <laughs> uh, but praise God. Aren't you glad to be in God's house today? Amen. It's so lovely to see you all, all in beautiful, beautiful colors. You know, there is a reason. Because we need to celebrate. We said celebrate Jesus. Celebrate every day. We need to celebrate him. Every day, whatever your circumstances are, we need to celebrate him every day. Amen. So, you know, when, when uh, Sister was talking about um, the, you know, the crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a human, a grown-up human, a normal a human, on average, we have five liters of blood flowing, running through our head, from the brain to the toes, and again circulating, circulating throughout. It's so, you know, it always um, hit me to when I, whenever I read that verse that sister just read, you know, he gave everything. He gave all the five liters of his blood for you and I. And when there was no more blood, he started giving water. Isn't he, isn't he good? That's the Savior who loves you. If he had no more blood to give, he started giving whatever he had, the water. Amen. That's how much he loves you and I. Amen. So praise God. Let's commit the service into uh, the word into God's hand and let's bow down and pray. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful message. Lord, we thank you for what we heard through the testimony of my brother and, and my sister's word of encouragement. Lord, all of that only proves that you are alive that all of that only proves that you are alive and well. We thank you that we do not worship a dead God. As my sister said, if we go to Israel today, Lord, your grave is empty. Lord, that tomb is empty. Lord, you are no longer there. Thank you, Lord, that even in the grave, you were the Lord, and you will always be. So, Father, it is such an honor to bring this word to your children. Lord, I pray that you will speak through me and glorify your name. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we were singing songs about deliverance. We were singing songs about breakthrough. You know, by, the, by, by what the Lord achieved on the cross, all our shackles are broken. All our chains are broken. So as I was waiting on the Lord to, to share what, uh, what I might share with you today, the Lord just asked this question. When was your breakthrough? When was your breakthrough? So I just want to ask you the same question. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand and give me a show of hands, but I'm asking you, are you waiting for a breakthrough? No matter whatever your circumstances are, no matter whatever you are going through, no matter whatever the problems you're facing, whatever the Goliath you're facing, are you waiting for a breakthrough? I don't want to show your hands, but if you are, I have good news for you. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that God always only gives us good news? Good news that is too good to be true, but it is true. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, your breakthrough, you don't have to wait for it anymore. Amen. That's the good news. You don't have to break, you, have, you don't have to wait for the breakthrough anymore because your breakthrough was given to you on a day like this 2,000 years ago. Amen. So even before you need a breakthrough, God had already provided it. Amen. So let's read Romans chapter 6, verses, uh, I think, 5 to 8. Let's find out. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, so you and I, when Christ was hanging on that cross, you and I were hanging on that cross with him because he was our substitute. So we were likened unto his death with him on the cross. So 
if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So when Christ died, you died. When Christ died, I died. When he was buried, you was buried. When Christ was resurrected, you were resurrected. Amen? So when did you have your breakthrough? Your breakthrough was not, is not going to be a day in the future. My brothers and sisters, the good news is your breakthrough was in a day in the past. Amen? So don't wait for tomorrow. If you need the breakthrough, today is the day. If you need a breakthrough, today, this moment, today is the day for your breakthrough. You need to take it. Because it's already happened 2,000 years ago. Don't wait for it anymore. You need to come to a point where you say, enough is enough. You know, Pastor Sam used to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You need to come to that point. You need to come to the point where you draw the line on the sand and say, that is it. Today is the last day. I'm not even going to spend a single second of my valuable time giving it to Satan to kick me where it hurts. It got to stop and got to stop today. In fact, we needed our breakthrough yesterday. Why didn't we take it? Take it, my brothers and sisters. Amen. So, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 4. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, uh, verse 17 to 18, let's read. And there was delivered unto him the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, this is what Lord Jesus, when he had opened the book, he placed where it was written, verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives. That's what I want you to underline. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. My brothers and sisters, this was accomplished. Your prisoners no more. Whatever the prison Satan is trying to hold you in, your prisoners no more. All you have to do is just come out. You are staying in a prison that has got open doors and you are just sitting in there. Why are you sitting in there? Just walk out. The doors are open. As, as my sister said, the, the, the stone has been rolled away. Walk out. Claim your freedom. Claim your deliverance. Claim, claim your breakthrough because it had already happened. Don't wait for it. You know, that's what Satan has put you to think. You've got to wait for it. You've got to wait for it. Oh, everyone's going through this situation. No, it does not need to be you. Let it be everybody else. But not you, not you as for a child of God, not for you as for a son or a daughter of the Almighty God. It does not belong to you. Your breakthrough was yesterday. Your breakthrough was when Christ broke through from that grave. Amen. You got to be like the lady who had the, the issue with the blood. For 12 years she suffered. How long have you been suffering? How long have I been suffering? It may be a day, it may be a two years, three years, few months, years, many years, but my brothers and sisters, it has to end today. You need to be bold. You need to reach out and take what is yours today. After 12 years, Bible says, after spending all her money on all physicians to get rid of this sickness and when she had no more then she decided today is the day but my brothers and sisters let's learn from this lady it doesn't it should not take you 12 years to come to this point 
We have the example to see from the word of God and we have to learn from her mistake. And we had to say, no, I'm not even giving another single second to this situation. I'm going to turn my life around. I'm going to take claim my breakthrough. You know what? She decided this lady was not even meant to be seen in the vicinity or in the community because she was unclean. She could make anyone else who come into her contact also unclean. But she couldn't care less. She couldn't care about that. She went and took what she thought was hers. Amen? That's how bold we have to be. Why? Because it has been done. As we heard on Good Friday when we were reading, Brother Steve, uh, Brother Steve was sharing, it is finished. Because he finished it. Lord Jesus finished it. He paid for it with his own blood. He paid the price for you and I to be free. My brothers and sisters, no amount of devil, all the hell, including Satan, put together, cannot stop you from claiming your uh, breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Look at the, look at the man, who, uh, man of Gadara, who had a legion of any, uh, evil spirits in his body. All that spirits in his body could not stop this man from coming to the feet of the master. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, devil has no power. In fact, we read from the book of 1 John that we will not go there, but we will, we will, you know, you can read it. The word of God says that at the cross, he nullified the work of the enemy. So you just need to know it. Bible says we perish because of the lack of knowledge. We, his people, God says, my people perish. My people suffer. My people, you know, my people go through pain and difficulties because of the lack of knowledge. So my brothers and sisters, we don't need to stay anymore. We don't need to stay for 12 years. We don't need to spend even a single second in turmoil. Today is the day you need to claim it by faith. Amen. So she took it and as soon as she she. she touched the hem of the master, Lord felt power leaving his body. Amen. That's one example. And the, another example is the lady, the Canaanite lady, the Syrophoenician lady whose daughter was demon possessed. She couldn't wait for any more. She said, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus pretended like he didn't hear. He just carried on. And he said, Lord, help me. You know, obviously, you know, Lord Jesus responded to her and said, look, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? Because she was a Gentile. The time for the Gentiles will come at the cross. She first, he first came for the, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But this lady said, Lord. I cannot wait for the cross. And what did Lord Jesus? He was marveled. He said, woman, great is your faith. Amen. Amen. She said, I cannot wait for the cross, Lord. I want it now. She needed her breakthrough now and she took it. And you know what? God didn't condemn her. He praised her. You know, he, uh, um, you know, spoke good of her. He said, well done. He said, wow, great is your faith. So my brothers and sisters, breakthrough, don't wait for a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough, decide today is my breakthrough. I'm going to come out of this prison. It's not, it has got no power over me. I'm sitting in a simple prison with the doors open. God, Satan can't lock the doors. It's already open. He's, Lord Jesus, after reading this, he said, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. Amen? So my brothers and sisters, don't waste your precious time. Don't allow the devil to be kicking you around, right, left, and center. You need to take claim. You need to take, uh, claim your um, breakthrough. Amen? So... 
when problems come, don't run away from God. Right? Whatever you're going through, don't run away from God. Instead, run to God. Amen? Let's go to the book of Ruth, um, chapter 1, verse 1. Now, we are going to the book of Ruth. Uh, Ruth uh, uh, comes after the book of Judges. Now it says, the word of God says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Now my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter, you know, whether you are a child of God or whether you are not a child of God, we cannot escape from problems. Right? In fact, children of God fought more battles in the promised land. Right? So whether you are a child of God, you don't think that you are exempted from problems. Lord Jesus said, you know, he prophesied, he said, in the world you shall have tribulations. He didn't say in the world everything is going to be a bed of roses. No, we wish, but no. Whether you are a child of God or not, we have to face the same problems. So, Ruth had, and her family had to face this famine. Right? And what did Ruth do? And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. You see, my brothers and sisters, when the problem came, instead of running to God, Ruth and her family ran from God. To a, to a country where God in his law, through Moses, said, don't even mingle with Moabs. So my brothers and sisters, when you are in trouble, don't go to the world. When you are in trouble, don't go to the enemy. Run to God. Now these people, Moab, they were Israel's staunch enemy. But instead, instead of running to God, these people, children of God, began to run away from God and jump ship. My brothers and sisters, don't jump ship. Stick with God. Because there is no way that you can survive by jumping ship. Amen? Let's go on to verse 2. And the name of this man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. Sorry, I kept on saying Ruth. It's Naomi. I beg your pardon. It's, uh, it's Naomi, not Ruth. So, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons Melon and Kilian, Ephratites of Bethlehem Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and they continued there. Now, how, I, I don't know how long they came to stay there, but the word of God said they came, maybe they just came to stay there and seek shelter till the famine is passed, but they stayed there. Now let's go on to the next verse. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left with her two sons. Moving on. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. And the name of one was Orpah. And the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there for about ten years. My brothers and sisters, they moved away from the will of God, and all she suffered was death. So there is no blessing, there is no productivity outside the will of God, my brothers and sisters. In Naomi's case, she literally suffered death. Her husband died, then her two sons died. You know, when these things happen, it needs to give you a waking call. When, the, when things are not going right, it needs to wake you up and say, You're, am I in the will of God? If I suffer in the will of God, fine, because I know God is there with me. He will take me out. But why would we suffer on purpose being outside 
for the, from the will of God. So she ran, she went away from the will of God. And she dwelt there ten, for 10 years. Uh, according to the Bible numerology, 10 means proving. So you see the audacity of Naomi? She tried to prove God that she can make it by staying outside the will of God. You can't, my brothers and sisters. Don't waste your time. You cannot, if you have gone, if you have jumped ship, if you, have, if you are friends with the world, it may be for a temporary period, you will have a temporary, I don't know, pleasure, but it is not lasting. You cannot just depend on it. It's time to come back. If you have jumped ship, if you have moved from the Lord, it's time to make that turn. It's time to come back to him. You know, but for 10 years, Naomi tried to prove to God, I can make it. And she couldn't. So, my brothers and sisters, finally, they decide, Naomi decided to go back to Israel. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful that our God is the God of many chances? So if you have gone one time, two times, three times, come back. Come back. You know, it is always, it's easy to come back. All you have to do is, from where you were disobedient, come back to the same place where you were disobedient. And this time, obey. Amen. Where you fell, come back. And instead of falling again, this time be obedient. Amen. So she decided to go back. Now let's see. Now when she was coming back to Israel, let's see what, um, what the ladies of Israel said, or the people of Israel said. Let's go to the uh, uh, book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 19, 18 to 19. When she saw... Um, sorry, book of chapter. It's chapter one. I want to. Uh, I want to go to the point where they welcome um, Ruth. Go to chapter. Yeah, 19, yeah, that's right, thank you. So, the, the, they two went, so Naomi and Ruth are going back to Israel now. And it came to pass, when they came to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, is this Naomi? Verse 20. And she said unto them, call me not Naomi. Naomi simply means the beautiful one, the pleasant one. And instead she said, call me Mara, the bitter one. You know, my brothers and sisters, Naomi allowed her circumstances to, to define her. You may be going through problem, problems right now. You may be you know, facing Goliaths in your life right now. Don't allow the circumstances define you. Naomi allowed the circumstances to define her. No, she's the pleasant one. She's the beautiful one. Instead, she allowed the circumstances to call her the bitter one, the not so good one. No. So whatever you're going through, you need to know that you can always come back to the Father. You're always and always will be his son or his daughter. So don't allow whatever you're going through to, to, to call you names. The only name that you should call you is, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I, can, I will be accepted. I have an acceptance in my father's house. I can always run to his arms. There is nothing stopping you from running into his arms. Amen? So when, when they went, now let's see what uh, Naomi said. Now look at Naomi's testimony. 
I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home again empty. When they call ye, when they call ye me, why then, sorry, thank you, why then call you me Naomi, seeing the Lord had testified against me, and the Almighty had afflicted me. Naomi, 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 look at her audacity. She is blaming God. To begin with, she's the one who ran away from God. God didn't kick her out. She went against God's will. She's going through problems right now because of being, in the, being outside in the will of God. And now she has the guts or the audacity to blame it on God. And, and, and it's as if God who has asked him, her to leave Israel and go to Moab. No, God didn't ask her to leave. Moab, uh, Israel, and go to Moab. She went off her own accord, and now she's blaming it on God. Listen, my brothers and sisters, we make mistakes, but please don't blame God for your mistake. It's time to take responsibility. Yeah, if you mess up, be honest. Say, Lord, I messed up again. Don't blame it on your. Oh, don't don't be like Adam. Oh, it's this woman because of this woman who you gave me. You gave me. No, stop, you know, we got to play, stop playing that, as Pastor Sam said, stone throwing. St throwing the stones at others, blaming others, blaming gaming, blame game. We got to stop it. Take responsibility for your mistake, because you know where you fell. Come back to that point. This time, be obedient. Amen? So, look at, now, I, 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 I was telling myself, this is the prodigal daughter, God's prodigal daughter. Look at the prodigal son, what he said. He took responsibility. He said, Lord, I have, Father, I have sinned against you, and I have sinned against the heaven. So take responsibility, my brother, my sister. The word of God says that he is faithful and just and righteous to cleanse you from all your sins when you confess. Don't stay away from him. Adam and, Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they ran away from God. Only if they had run to him. And look at the father. He came looking down for them. He came down looking for them. And you know, when he shouted, Adam, Adam, you know, that pain was in his voice. You know, that, that, you know. So my brothers and sisters, run to him. You know, it's time. I wanted to share this message because it's time to rise up again. Amen. It's time to return back again. You know, if you have gone away from the Lord, if you, if, if you are facing problems because you are staying outside of the will of God, it's time to come back to the fold. It's time to come back to, um, to the Almighty. So my brothers and sisters, in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12, God has promised something. And God says, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12, the word of God says, Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. And today, today I will give double for all your trouble. So my brothers and sisters, let's make this day of deliverance. Let's make this day of breakthrough today. If you would only come to the stronghold of God, that's the stronghold you should be in. Not the stronghold of the world, not the stronghold of the enemy. And you know, in this stronghold, you are going to get double for all the time that you lost. The, you know, the, uh, the book of uh, Job is very, um, you know, uh, encouraging. You know, at the end, Job received double for all his losses. Amen. So listen, come, return back. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will render double for all your troubles. And 
If we go to Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15, the word of God says, For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence will be your strength, and you would not. You know, this is the invitation the Lord gave to the Israelites. He said, come back, return to the stronghold. But they did not. And because they did not, they, could, they, 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 they couldn't enjoy the blessing of God. And that's why the Lord said, but you would not. You would not listen to me. But when God speaks this day, speaks this to you today, please don't, don't be like the Israelites. Return. Because in returning and in rest, you will be saved. And in confidence, shall, uh, in quietness shall be your strength. So my brothers and sisters, you know, when the, when the prodigal son was in the pigsty, you know, or in the pig pen, you know, the word of God says that he, it came to himself, finally, the light bulb, you know, was lit. Finally, he received revelation, saying that, you know, what am I doing here? Even my father's servants are at a better state than I am. Why am I here? So my brothers and sisters, you cannot enjoy life, the kind of life that Lord Jesus died for you to have by staying away from him. No matter what you go through, you have Christ with you. So when you face that problem, you will overcome, unlike the other person who faces that problem. So my brothers and sisters, I really hope that you know, this will be a wake up call to all of us. You know, return, come back. You know, if you're, if you're, enjoy, if you're not enjoying life, check yourself up, you know. See, where, why is this happening to me? Where have I gone wrong? Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what, what door have I opened to the enemy to come and kill, steal, and destroy my joy? Why is everything going against me? If it is in the will of God, fine. He will be your strength to go through it. And when you come out of it, you will be like gold. As gold has been through refinery and been refined. But if you're facing unnecessary problems, you need to check yourself up and say, it's time to go back. It's time to go back, my brothers and sisters. So finally... Let's read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Good Friday, we were talking about this. We were talking all about the crucifixion. We were talking all about the statements he made while on that, hanging on that cross. Despising the shame and, say, and set down at the right hand uh, side of the throne of God. You know what, my brothers and sisters? God, as my sister was saying, the Roman punishment was ruthless. It was, it's, it was cruel. Right? Yet, the word of God says, Lord Jesus considered it all joy to go through that suffering, to go through that pain for you and I. Now, when you come across this word, you need to tell yourself that my Lord did not go through this excruciating pain and public humiliations, you know, hanging on that cross naked. And he did not go through all of this for me to stay in a pigsty. It needs to wake you up. Your savior did not go through all these troubles so you can wallow up in pity. 
in a pigsty. No, rise up my brothers and sisters. Don't let his sacrifice go in vain. He did not just die like that publicly just so we and I, you and I can be defeated. No, claim your breakthrough today. Claim your deliverance today. Claim it. You need to come to the point where you say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Claim it today. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the breakthrough that you died for us to have. Thank you that with you we died, with you we were buried, and with you we rose again. So Father, we are not waiting for a breakthrough, whatever the breakthrough is, Father, we are not going to give in, give in to living inside this prison forever. No, Lord, it's time to come out. It's time to take our thumb out of our mouths and grow up in, in, in your presence, O oh Father God. So, Father, we are not waiting for this breakthrough uh, for a day in the future. We, we claim it right now in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, whatever my, my brothers and sisters are going through, whatever the problem is, big or small, Father, we evaluate ourselves. Father, we evaluate where we are. Father, if it is in your, if it is in your will, that we face these problems, fine. We thank you. As your servant said, when we come out of this, we will be like gold before you, Lord. But Father, if these problems we are facing is not from you, Lord, if you have not authorized this, Father, we come back, we evaluate ourselves. Father, we humble ourselves. Yes, Lord, we mess up many times, but Lord, we thank you, the God who we worship is God of many times, oh Father God. Thank you, Father. Your, your love and your word says, love never keeps a record of wrong. So Father, we thank you that when we come back, Lord, we are accepted in the beloved. Father, we will not let problems to define us. Lord, we know our standing. We know who we are. We are blood-bought property of God. We are blood-marked property of God. We belong to the house of God Almighty. We are his sons and daughters, the co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Father, we know our position. Lord, we know we are seated at the right-hand side of God in heavenly places where Christ sat. So, Father, we know. So, Father, we are... We are we are stopping the problems to define us. Father, this morning, this afternoon, we are humbling ourselves before you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you will never, ever condemn us. Thank you that you will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. Thank you that we can always run into the loving arms of Almighty God. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Thank you, Lord, for this wake-up call. Thank you, Lord, that we can rise up again. Thank you, Lord, that we can stir ourselves and rise up again, O oh Father God. Father, I thank you that we can return again. And thank you for this wonderful promise we have that you will give double for all our trouble, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So we can come boldly into your presence. Lord, like the, the lady who had the issue with blood, like the Canaanite woman, Father, we can choose to claim our breakthrough today. Lord, we can choose to say in faith, enough is enough. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. 
thank you Lord that Satan and all his entourage has been defeated once and for all by what you achieved on the cross O oh Lord your word says that at the cross you nullified the works of the enemy father we thank you that we can uh, we 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 have the power now to not to allow the satan to kill steal and destroy by keeping us in ignorance of oh father father we thank you we thank you for your son we thank you for your great sacrifice we thank you for what you achieved. Lord, it is all your doing. It is marvelous in our sight, Lord. You sacrificed. You sacrificed your lamb for the sin of mankind. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Yeah.